turn my camera off. There we go. <laughs> oh, you don't want what, people seeing that on the replay? Right? Um, <laughs> I don't want to see my, my laundry. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I have everyone's names and numbers written down. So what I did is I literally just went from top to bottom. Like first five entries is one through five. Next set was six, seven, and eight, whatever they were. And literally just wrote them out. So I'm going to use random.org. I told you we would have five spinners, um, except Savannah already claims one of those spinners because she got an automatic spin. So the first spin will be Savannah. So we will do four more spinners. The only time that I'll do more than five is if there are five spins, like people that I got automatic spins, then I'll still draw one or two people to like get the drawing spins but so in other words if in one week five of y'all get two each time we'll still make sure the the lottery ones did you have a question dion diane dion mm, no i was going to mention um i have cedar with me she just started on hi Ricky. And yeah, that's my daughter, and I came to help with the granddaughter, and then I was like, we got a five o'clock Zoom, let's get on. So it's five o'clock here. <laughs> Very awesome. It is seven o'clock here. I'm in Indiana, so. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep, seven o'clock. So I'm going to do the spin first. So Savannah, I'm going to do your spin first since you won the first one. Um, and then in the contest page, and this is the, this contest is only for my downline, so if you're on here and you're not in my downline, Take inspiration and you can do a contest like this with your own team if you want to. Um, but in the contest page, I put the picture of the numbers and I clearly put in there like any new entries need to be below this. So starting five minutes ago, I guess, um, <laughs> make sure any new entries that you're putting in. So any, if you're updating tonight or tomorrow or Wednesday or whatever like they're below where I said put it below because I'm not going to go look up and like resort through them every single week that's a waste of time so these you guys are in the drawing every single drawing that we have for all of December unless your number is called and then that number will be crossed out because you can only obviously claim your number one yeah. time sounds fair okay cool exactly so the first and if you're in Canada your prize might be modified depending on what I can and cannot ship. <laughs> Cause I know one time a girl won a cute little notebook pack. Literally it cost me $3 to put together. Shipping was 18 bucks. I said, I'm just going to PayPal you $5 and you can go to your own dollar store and buy this. <laughs> like okay. at that point, oh, it's a yeah. waste. Mm -hmm. Okay. So get it. Savannah, you got the first spin. You can see most of it, I think. So you will get a 10 of the loyalty cards. Not right now, boy. So I'm gonna, yeah, the loyalty cards are awesome. I actually sent out my first set of thank you cards and loyalty cards today. And that's actually one of the little things I'm gonna touch on. I'm gonna get these out so I don't forget about them. Um, so far, I've had three or four people get the loyalty cards already and already go crazy about them. Think they're the coolest thing ever. So, yeah, I also think they are. Never good. I like it. Like sending thank you cards to your oh. to your loyal customers, or when we have a team doing what she does. That's cool. All right, so then I'm going to draw four people to do spins. I'm just going to use random.org. So I'll draw all four numbers, and then I'll do all four spins just back to back. There are 120 numbers. First number is 119. Y'all can't really see that. So 119 is Ruth. I don't think she's on here tonight, but she will be on the 5 o'clock one in the morning, so we'll let her know what she wins. Cool. The second one is number five, which Savannah, I'm already looking at the numbers, I think, because <laughs> she's just grin. She knows it's her. So let me mark out 119. I'll mark out five. So Savannah, you'll get another spin. And guys, some of y'all, Savannah being one of them, 
you have a lot of dang entries. So chances of you winning multiple each week are really high. Next one is 54, which is Janice. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Is Janice on here tonight? Yeah, well, kind of. She's on, but I don't think she's on right now. <laughs> Her head's there. And the last one of the night is 94, which is Holiday. Oh, that's so cool. She texted me saying that she could not get on. She's one of our brand new distributors. She is um, cooking dinner. And I told her, like, that's fine. Like, I'll let you know if you win. That was one of the prerequisites. So everyone else, like, the prerequisite was not that you had to be on the Zoom. So everybody else, like, your entries are still in. So next week when we do the drawing, the numbers will still be one through whatever, so you like, the, your number goes in the drawing every single week. So it's not wasted, I guess. But, and then just whatever more nice. entries you get in will be added to it. So. Nice. So Ruth. No, see what they get. Ruth. <laughs> I can't read backwards. Ruth gets a surprise. So that will be something fun that I can put together and send her. And then Savannah again. You get another, more loyalty cards. By the end of this, some of y'all are gonna have enough loyalty cards to cover you for like the next six months and you're not gonna need to worry about buying your own. <laughs> Which is Where not a bad thing, them? you know? But so speaking of that, on purpose, I am mailing out all the prizes the first week of January because I am not mailing some of y'all sets of 10 loyalty cards 20 times this month. I will pay shipping one time and <laughs> yeah. do it all at the same time. Um, Janice Where's is the next you? one. Janice also <laughs> gets a surprise. <laughs> And the last one is holiday. And she gets a book. So I'll get in touch with her and see if she will get in touch and see what kind of book would actually benefit her the best. Um, that was fun. I like this. I wish I could be on the spinner board. <laughs> I need to tell April, you need to do a contest like this so I can win some things. Um, yeah. They have though. They, uh, I want to say it was like a year ago now. I don't know, but they had a like a spinner like this. I don't know if Savannah, if you remember or not, but it was a spinner like this, except it was a giant one standing in their living room. I paid like thirty five dollars for this, so I don't even know how much they paid for a big spinner because it was like a really cool big spinner board. Um, Absolutely. so the two things that I, was I want to ask do what? How do you get the loyalty cards? Where do you get the loyalty cards? I go to you just Vista buy your own. Vistaprint.com. Oh. Yeah, okay. they're they're so good quality, and for the price that you're paying, like it's not expensive at all. So, for cool. those of y'all haven't been on Thanks. or you're watching the replay, um, I was on. Oh, I don't know, if Savannah, have you put those? Um, Cheyenne Zooms in the VIP chat in like a blog yet. <laughs> she gets the face like I was like, crap, I knew I meant to do something. Let me write that down this time. She's going to put them in the VIP chat I've, or the VIP page. I've only listened to two so far. Both of them was like, holy crap already, you know? Um, so the first one was just them going through their numbers and kind of talking about how like December of, you know, 2019, their volumes were this. And by March, they had tripled. And the one girl, the one that resonated with me talking about how she had been stuck at Diamond and stuck at like $2,000 paychecks. And she's like, yeah, December of whatever year I was at 2000. And by March, I was at 13,000. I said, yes, I am claiming that I am done being at these four digit paychecks. Um, Luckily, I haven't been stuck at 2000 for a while, but that's only because we have really good fast starts. <laughs> I really like our fast start program, but in our calves, like we have a really good team under us. Um, 
but yeah, I am nowhere near the 10,000 mark. And that was my goal by the end of 2020. So I am just like ready to level up. But then on the second Zoom, and I don't remember who said it, but the second Zoom, which I finished watching this morning, um, maybe it was Cheyenne that made, no, maybe I think it was Morgan that said it. She said, God never gives you blessings that your character can't keep. And I was like, Mm -hmm. here I am praying for 40, 50, 60 customers a month, but I don't take care of the 25 that I got, you know, already. Like here I am praying for $10,000 paychecks, but am I being a good steward with the three, four and $5,000 paychecks I'm getting? Insert if you're on YouTube Mm -hmm. income disclosure statement right there. Um, Like, how do you expect God to give you an ambassador team when you're not showing up for the Ruby team that he already gave you? And I was Mm -hmm. like, dude, like that just hit me like a ton of bricks in the face. Like whatever blessing you're praying for, if your character level isn't up to where you can keep that blessing once you get it, don't expect God to give it to you. It's like pastors use this sermon a lot, but they talk about if you can't handle the hundred dollars God gave you, why is he ever going to give you a million? And I just haven't heard it in a really long time. So when I heard that this morning, like it brought back and I understand it. Like God's not giving you whatever you're asking for if you can't take care of it. Or, and I tell my daughter this all the time. And I told her this all the time before we moved into this house, but I'll tell y'all real quick. I don't think it's a story I've shared that much. So when my husband and I got married, we moved into a very small, basically it was a basement. We called it an apartment, but it was somebody's basement. Didn't have separate entries or anything. And the landlords were amazing. Like we're so grateful for them. Um, we were supposed to be there for a year. Right after we moved in, found out we were pregnant. We went through some real hard times with both of our jobs. Long story short, we were there for five. And so my daughter lived there for, she's six now. We've been here for two years. So she lived there till, till she was basically a little after four, I think. Um, there was mold on the floor all the time. Like we were constantly cleaning mold off the floor and the walls, not any kind of mold that like is going to make us sick, but just mold because there was so much moisture as a basement. It flooded multiple times, running different things. Like one year it flooded four days before Christmas and flooded all of our Christmas presents. Luckily they were all in boxes. We just opened everything early and like I rewrapped, you know, glories, but it was obnoxious. We would literally wake up and get out of bed to ankle deep water throughout our entire apartment because it was all tile and the sub pump would just randomly go out or the area of town that we lived in was kind of ghetto. They didn't take care of their, not sewer. Um, when the water, like when it rains a lot and the water runs off, I don't know what that's called. Um, and you're supposed to have like your, the city has definite things are supposed to do for that. So it doesn't flood the houses. Well, the area that we lived in didn't have very good drainage. So it would flood the basements in the area. So multiple times, we would wake up and we would have like two, three o'clock in the morning, have to go out and get like a little shop back and be like shop back in water, carrying it up the stairs, dumping it outside the water, like shop back in water, dumping it into the tub. Like it was, or not the tub, the toilet. Cause I made that mistake once too. If you dump it in the tub, apparently it clogs it. I didn't know that. And then we had another issue. <laughs> the toilet's the safe bet for if you ever have to do that. Um, but I always told my daughter, I said, as much as this kind of a crappy apartment, I never told her that, but in my mind, I was like, no matter how we, much we clean it, it always smelled like mildew or bleach, one or the other, depending on what season we were in of cleaning. Um, and it was so small. It looked, and we didn't have nice furniture. Like, um, we had a little card table down there. We didn't have a kitchen. We had like a little dorm room kitchenette looking thing. The fridge was probably from like, I don't even know the 1960s, one of those little white boxes. Um, the stove, like the oven did not work properly. The burners didn't, didn't light properly. Uh, goodness, the closet in our room <laughs> was too small for our clothes. So I moved all of my stuff into a hallway closet that was supposed to be like a storage room. We just put a little, um, little thingy to put your, like a rod and we turned that into a closet. Um, goodness, it was just, 
it was very, very small. It was not, not good. Like our living room was probably the size of what my bedroom is right now. Um, but I told Gloria all the time, I said, we need to make sure that we are good stewards and we clean because if we don't take care of this, then God's not going to let us have a better one. And lo and behold, the house that we're in now, God dropped into our lap. We got it for, I, I think like 20,000 under asking value because we knew the person that was selling it. So they gave us a really good deal on it. It was like, we needed a house. And two weeks later, we were moved into this place. Like Savannah remembers because we were in Florida at conference and we knew as soon as we got back, we literally got, like we, we spent, uh, I want to say we were there for a week and a half, a week and a half. We went to Disney. Like we did all the things we loved conference that year. Um, we got back in town and we drove from the airport to the U-Haul, grabbed the U-Haul, drove to the apartment, packed everything up, drove over to the house. It was such a long weekend, but this house, like, and we were renting this house to start with. And then like, it just dropped in our lap to buy it. Um, and again, this house is not a mansion. Like it's a three bedroom. I think it's 1400 square foot. I don't know. Is that maybe I'm thinking too small. I don't remember. 14,000, 14. I don't know. Clear. No, it's not 14,000, 1400, I think. Um, shut up, Savannah. I don't know houses. I do know that we have an office that I get to use as a tax write off. We have a giant, like freaking amazing table that we got brand new for $60 because it had a little dent on one corner that you don't see because it's up against the wall. Um, it has an attached two, two car garage. We have a nice bedroom. My daughter has a nice bedroom. The living room is fairly big. The kitchen is big. The laundry room is awesome. Um, we have a giant fenced in backyard. And I fully believe had we not taken care of the apartment, God would have never landed us this house. And in about probably five to eight years, we're going to build a house. But I fully believe we don't take care of the one we have now. God's never going to bring us to the point where we can build a bigger one, where we can host team retreats and where we can host family get togethers. Like we have a pretty large family on both sides, both sides. So again, one of those things, whatever blessing you're asking for, whether it be a new house, a new car, like a bigger business, a bigger paycheck. How does your character look for the paycheck, house, car, business that God has already given you? Because if you can go out to your car right now and you can't get into the passenger side because there's so much trash in it, or you got to wade through trash to get in your minivan because of all the crap that your kids have in, you got to wade through trash to get to the back seat. You probably shouldn't be asking God for a new car because you and your kids are about to destroy that one as well. And I'm preaching to myself on this one because I'm very lax in that area. That's one that I'm not good at. And Brett gets irritated all the time because the car's his baby, but we are working on it. Now the house, different story. That's one that I am a little bit more adamant about because I grew up in a house that we didn't take care of. Many houses, we just kept moving when you couldn't pay the bills. Um, but I remember a pastor saying like, because I remember... <laughs> my all my super smart 11 year old self telling my pastor one time yeah we just need to move into a new house because the one we have is crappy and it's falling apart and he looked at me dead in the eyes and said well, why do you think it's crappy and falling apart you and your five siblings did that and I was like no yeah yeah we did so <laughs> and it's funny because one of Gloria's little friends told me like I don't know two months ago yeah can you pray for us to have a bigger nicer house because the one we have right now it's just trashed all the time and I literally, and I didn't tell her this because the kids six, six and 11 are a little bit different understanding levels. And I was also, by the time I was 11, I was as mature as a 16 year old when it came to understanding life because I was just thrown into it. So a six year old, I wouldn't, you know, throw under the bus at that point. But in my mind, I'm like, you're gonna, if you got a new house, it would look like your old one does in less than a month. You're complaining because your teammates aren't working. When's the last time you got on a work Zoom and said, hey, let's get on this work Zoom together? Like Dion just did tonight. She's at her daughter's house. Like, hey, there's a five o'clock Zoom. Let's get on. When's the last time you got in the VIP, the VIT page and you shared some little nugget that you got from a book that you're reading? Um, Julie's on here. We were talking last night about just the different ways to become 
a better leader. And I told her, and not just towards her, but to anyone become, wanting to become a better leader. I'm giving myself this pep talk. The only way to become a better leader is to do the action and just be a better leader. Want to be a better leader? Okay, go share some value. Want to be a better leader? Hop on a Zoom with your team and do a work Zoom. And you can open it up to the whole team. Doesn't have to be just your downline. Want to be a better leader? Fill in the blank. <laughs> so whatever you're asking for, examine your character now and say, okay, how can I make my character meet the blessing that I'm asking for? So my area was loyal customers, one of my big areas, one of 17 million areas that I'm working on my character levels. So what I did is used to, I would write handwritten thank you cards. And I'm not saying this is a bad idea, especially if you're brand new. I'm all for keeping, I don't know, Janice just got on here. Did you know that you won one of the spinners? Ha, <laughs> she did just get on here. You be telling yourself. <laughs> Yes, you won the spinner. You won a surprise. So we'll, you won't know what it is till it hits you in the mail. They won't be mailed out till the first week of January. Um, make sure no the other winners hopped on when I wasn't looking. So if you're new, I am all about keeping your overhead low. Y'all know I tell you that. You, I don't, I don't make you run an auto ship. I don't make you keep that twenty dollar e suite on. Like, build up the business, make some money before you are spending all your money. So that means if you're in your first two months of business and you're not even making 50 bucks a month yet, do not go do what I'm about to show you. Go to the dollar store, get a pack of 10 cards for a dollar and do that. <laughs> I've been in this business for a long time. I got to the point where I was having to write out 40, 50, 60 handwritten cards a month. That takes a lot of time. And my time is more valuable than what it costs me to do this and outsource it instead. So what I did because I got real irritated. <laughs> the last time I was writing hand, written cards, I was like, no, there has to be a better way than this. So somebody on the Zoom, I don't remember who it was, this was like six months ago now, talked about having a loyalty card. So I went to Vistaprint. I don't even know how to, where, where are you? Vistaprint.com, printed out some loyalty cards. I think this was a while ago. I know it's sideways because my screen is like weird. I think I paid $25 for 500 of these babies. I know that they were not expensive. So all it is, it has my name, my Instagram handle, my phone number. I don't put it works on here. You can if you want to. But the reason I don't, and I didn't say this then, some more things have fallen in my lap to finalize this. I'm launching a merch line, a homeschool merch line in the next 30 to 60 days as soon as some things fall into place. So I'm using this for that as well. So I'm double, double dipping, I guess you would call it. So for It Works, there are 10 spaces on here. And I just tell them when they get this, like I have a little write-up that I can put in the VIP chat as soon as we're done here. And it tells them what the loyalty program is. But it's all stuff the company is doing. This isn't stuff I'm doing for them, most of it. I think one thing is. But like four months, they get some freebies sent to them. I don't send that, the company does. I am just making it cool by giving them a little punch card. And again, don't do this if you're brand new. But if you're making a little bit of money and you want to go drop 25 bucks, invest in your business a little bit. If not, when they get your thank you card, just tell them. Like in the thank you card, I would write, um, you have started our loyalty program. As soon as you get this card, let me know and I'll tell you all about it. So just something to like segue into it. So at eight months, they get another freebie. And at 10 months, I'm going to send them out like a thank you gift. And it'll depend on what they've been ordering. Because if you are on my auto ship for 10 months, because let me tell you, that's not normal for me because I don't take care of my customers. Change and all that. Um, if you're on auto ship for 10 months and you're ordering, I don't know, $150 worth of stuff a month, I do not mind sending you out a freaking thank you gift. So, and it might be that I send a handwritten card at that point and like a cute little notebook or something. It doesn't have to be expensive. So then I was still writing the handwritten thank you cards, sending these babies out with them. And literally I was like, there has to be a different way to do this. So I remembered the same girl that talked about these on the same Zoom. Another girl got on. I was like, well, I don't do loyalty cards, but I do thank you cards. She's like, and I just like put my family's picture on them. So I was like, well, if I do loyalty cards and a thank you card, it's just like me doing a thank you card now, but I don't have to write it out every time. So 
so literally I went to Walmart. Well, I didn't even go to Walmart. I went to walmart.com because I am that level of lazy right now. Um, and I had thank you cards printed up that has our picture. It says, thank you. And on the bottom, this is exactly what I was writing on 40 freaking cards a month. All it says is, thank you so much for your order. Here's our loyalty card. Let me know when you receive it. Tanya Brett and Glory Johnson. And then it's got a couple pictures on the side. One of us and one of Glory petting a kangaroo because I thought it was cool. Just showing our life. Like it doesn't have to be a super professional thing. Now these, I paid $65 for $250. That's why I'm saying if you're not making money in the business yet, don't go drop 65 bucks on this. I promise you, if you come to me and say, well, I spent $65 and I'm losing money because I spent this, this, and this, and they're all things I told you don't buy. I'm going to look at you and be like, those weren't even business expenses. Technically, yeah, like you can write them off on your taxes, but those weren't things that were necessary to run your business. You just chose to do it. So at that point, I'm not going to feel bad that you quote unquote lost money. Okay, because this business doesn't take any money to run. You can't lose money if you're doing it smartly. Now, any extra products you're wanting to buy, any extra things you're doing for your team, like that's all stuff you're choosing. And I get it. I choose to do it. I don't mind doing it. I don't mind, as Savannah says, pulling the weeds. It's in the book I haven't read yet. But this is true. This is one thing for me that I wasn't doing because it was taking so long. And I was using the excuse of like, but I really don't have time to do it. Now it takes me two seconds to slap these in an envelope that already has my address on it, which I'm actually not going to show because it's going to be on YouTube, already has my address. Literally, all I have to do is stick a stamp and write their address on it. So, and then what I do when they get it, because um, they will tell me like, oh my gosh, I just got your card in the mail. Thank you. It's so cute. Whatever. Um, and when handwritten, I was getting the same responses, by the way. It's not just because there's a picture on it now. People love handwritten things. Um, I tell them about the loyalty program. I said, does that all make sense? They say yes. Then I say, awesome. If you want to take a picture of the loyalty card, or if you want to take a picture of a thank you card, or if you want to take a picture of whatever, or if you just want to type this up, if you want to basically tag me in a post, and again, I'll put this in the VIP page, but I give them three post options. Let me pull one up real quick. I had on top of my head and I can't think of the girl's name that I sent it to. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so the three different options of the post. The one just says, I just started to, and they, they tag you in it. So like they're posting, but they're like tagging on Facebook. I just started Tanya's learning challenge. I'm so excited to see how healthy my hair is in a few months. Thanks. Like literally, it's not some big salesy nothing. It literally is just tagging my thank you card and posting that. The other one is just put an order with Tanya's business. I love the customer perks she gives. The loyalty card's awesome. Can't wait to get going. Again, vague on purpose. What I'm not saying is I just put a Networks order in with Tanya. Go hit her up if you want some Networks products because I don't post Networks on my page. So they tag me in that. I'm not putting it on my page. And the third one is, Oh, I was like, where's the third one? The third one is, um, just started Tanya's Mermaid Challenge. Definitely pleased with the customer service she gave. Very professional. So again, it doesn't have to talk about the product because some people don't want to like push a product that they haven't tried. So they're pushing you because they have dealt with you. They're pushing the loyalty program because they have read up on that. So it's not always like have them hype up about the product because some people don't want to do that. Um, and then what I'm doing, you don't have to do this. But what I'm doing is any customer that posts that each month, I'm just doing like a $5 Starbucks card giveaway just for customers that post that. So everyone that posts goes into a drawing and I'm telling them that like, there's probably going to be 10 people in this. Your odds of winning are pretty big. Now, if you don't want to do that, and again, if you're brand new, don't do it, but maybe you have a coffee sample in hand and they ordered the mermaid. Say everyone that goes in is going to, you know, go into a drawing for a free coffee sample. Maybe you have, I don't know, a cute notebook on hand, anything. Like it doesn't have to be big at all for this. Or 
you don't have to do anything. You can literally say like, I'm pretty new to the business. If you wouldn't mind tagging me in a post, I would definitely appreciate it, but don't feel obligated to and give them the three options. So any questions on any of that? I feel like that was like a lot tonight, more than I thought I was going to cover actually, because it's only been 35 minutes. So <laughs> any questions on any of that though? Like I feel like loyal customer retention is something that we all need to work on as a team for sure. I was telling Julie this again last night. I was like, one reason that some of us are getting frustrated, and I'll put my hand up on there, when you bring in 20 new customers, but you have 20 leaves, so you feel like you're just treading water for all the work that you're doing. We have no problem enrolling customers at, on this team. We are very, very good at posting up those ads and like getting outside of our networks. But customer retention, we're not doing great at, and I'm like the, the definitely the setting the tone for that. So I want to revisit that and make sure that we're taking care of our customers more than we are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and unrecord or hit whatever. <laughs>